Welcome fellow travelers, it is Nikki Gould. We are officially in retrograde currently with Mercury. We've been in retrograde with a lot of other planets and it might seem like a doozy. If you really follow astrology, this past mm, six months has been very interesting. And for me, I am just learning. And so it's been actually really very fascinating to try to get the gist of things. As I said before, Mercury in retrograde, Mercury is a mythological god that is the god of communication. So in this day and age, communication is electronic. Even if you have a phone plugged into a jack in your wall, you still probably are electronic with that because most people who have a phone have it bundled in their cable stuff so or via internet so you don't have to worry about long distance so pretty much everything we do communication wise a lot of it's electronic unless you're sending mail and we've had some issues with our mail before Mercury retrograde and the deal with what's going on right now this mercury retrograde is a lot more intense because first of all the sign it's in and the fact that it's in Scorpio and Scorpio is a fixed sign. So there's some issues with that. The other part is we are living in a totally different world where there's a lot of professionals on Zoom, on Skype, whatever Google, I forget what they call it, doing clients, doing patients, doing whatever the case may be. People are doing a lot of work, you know, online. So this really can greatly cause some issues. So for instance, if you are either taking a class or you're a client of somebody who is leading something online, what we can do as clients is be really mindful, be really mindful that our electronics on our side is working. So we don't put extra pressure on people who are leading things and that we are really understanding and that when we schedule things that we give ourselves a gap so for instance if something should happen where there's wonky computer connection or where there's sound issues or whatever give yourself time before or after the session because that way if you're flexible if the the person who you're working with hasn't scheduled people right before right after you right on top of each other they can you know make up for that lost 10 minutes and if you are a professional using zoom or anything like that give yourself time to log in to make sure the video's going the sound's going and just be ready to know like okay if my for instance i have airpods that i started working with if my airpods lose their charge i know i can rip them out and if my phone stops you know something goes up with my phone because I now have my phone hooked up to my laptop when I do my Zoom classes. If that goes awry, I can unplug all that and just go from my, you know, camera on my laptop. So knowing what you can do if things go awry, like having a little plan, you know, just stripping down to the very basic where you're just, okay, I'm doing this is something you can do and I go on earlier than I used to um, before and then that way I'm as prepared as I possibly can be and like I said staying calm staying patient with the person whether you are the, the client or you are the leader staying calm both directions knowing that everybody's doing the best we can knowing that the way the energy of the world is working that it can be a little challenging now let's get into Scorpio and this and being a fixed sign so when we deal with astrology we're dealing with elements so we're dealing with earth air water and fire so there it's broken down there's 12 months and there's 12 signs and it's broken down so there's three signs per earth air water and fire uh, and then it's farther broken down by fixed mutable and cardinal now fixed signs are generally there's good and bad for everything i mean that's just in general fixed signs and especially because scorpio is a water sign fixed signs tend to be stuck and stagnant and if you've ever seen stagnant water there's not a lot of good things about it except for it can grow lotuses 
Now, the good thing about being a fixed sign is that you are somebody who is dependable. That is somebody who, when you know you set a, a fixed sign out in a certain direction, they're going to keep going. And it's going to be, they're more an, an endurance type of person where they can go long distances, long you know, again, but they know what they're doing and they don't like to be deterred off course. Uh, and what throws fixed signs off is if you throw in some new challenge. Now that wasn't there last week. And, you know, so they, you know, fixed signs can have trouble with that. However, fixed signs, the good thing about that is if a fixed sign tells you they love you or that you're their friend, you can count on that forever. They're the person that if you need to be bailed out or picked up, if your car breaks down, they're, they're the ones you can go to. Mutables. Mutable, I love the energy of mutable. The positive energy of mutable is that the fact that they are low on drama. They go with the flow. Mutables are like, yay. So from the cardinal and from the fixed sign, mutables can look a little bit flaky. However, if you're mutable, like I said, I love your energy because I love that solo on drama and you are actually a wonderful teacher of mindfulness and being in the moment, which is helpful to a fixed sign. Now, cardinal signs. Cardinal sign is great. If you have a room full of fixies and a room full of mutables, there's not going to be a lot getting done. It's going to be like herding cats, let's just face it. Now, cardinal signs. The good thing about a cardinal sign and the bad thing about a cardinal sign is if you stand in the road and put up a roadblock, they will drive over you, through you, and through the roadblock, over, through, whatever. It, they are not deterred really easy. However, the problem tends to be is that they also are not usually understanding of mutables or a fix. They don't get why you're set in your ways and why you just don't change it, you stubborn, whatever. And then, and with the mutables is like, why are you flaky? You know, why are you just all over the place and such a dreamer? So again, all of them could look at each other and be judgmental. What you do need to know, by the way, is most of us, if you actually have your whole chart done, we all are a mixture of these different things and at different situations and different scenarios, we might be acting like a fixie, we might be acting like a mutable, or we might be acting like a cardinal. And we all have different aspects in which that is. Like I've just learned recently, I had my chart redone and I learned that I already knew that my rising sign was Libra, which is a cardinal sign. So I have my, my sun sign is Scorpio, which is a fixed water. My uh, rising sign is a Libra, which is uh, cardinal air. And then um, my uh, moon sign is Taurus, and which is a fixed earth. And these all have wonderful, great things. And your sun sign is pretty much like, you know, like I said, when people go, hey, what's your sign? That's it. And a lot of us tend to be like, I am a this, I am a that. However, what you present is generally a rising sign. So I, I'm a Libra rising. And if people know me pretty well, I very much Libra-esque when it comes to trying to keep things in balance and trying to, I definitely try to be a peacemaker in certain situations, family situations and, you know, drama if I can. And I try to look at things from all sides of, you know, all points of view. And, and my, like I said, my moon sign, which is your subconscious, is Taurus and Taurus has some really wonderful aspects to it. So these things tend to balance us out. So as we learn more, and I had a friend, um, Vanessa Clare, quantum tarot artist, I believe is what she goes by. Um, she explained what the difference between the sun sign and your rising sign and your uh, moon sign are. So I really appreciate that. She helped me through that today and helped me figure out some stuff. So I really appreciate that. And if you want to 
explore some really interesting and a very entertaining person who mixes tarot with astrology. It's uh, uh, Vanessa Clare, quantum tarot artist, I believe is what her uh, YouTube is. And uh, I will get to the point where I can link stuff to my thing at the bottom on YouTube because um, there's ways to do that. Uh, being computers are, are something that is, is can be not my strong suit. Uh, however, I'm learning and I'm growing and uh, I hope you are too. All right, guys. Peace, love, namaste.